Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Oh. What's up? What's up? It's like vlogception. This is awesome. I've been looking forward to this day. It's all happening. It's all happening. I've really been looking forward to this day. Hey, uh, it's the Todd Spiro Show brought to you by uh, pizzapizza.ca. Um, uh, I just want to let everyone know that we have our Bacardi broadcaster at the Blue Jays game. We'll do our first check-in in about 20 minutes for that. But how could we not get right into it? These guys, well, let's be honest. They're very powerful human beings. And why are they powerful? Well, I don't know if they could necessarily uh, fight Ooh. crime, and I don't necessarily know if they could lift a heavy car off a, 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 if it toppled on someone, but I can tell you this. They connect and they engage and they captivate millions of people on the daily. Uh, thank you for being here. Matthew Santoro and Rob Dyke. How are you guys? Good, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. man. It's uh, it's cool. We're good. It is. This, is. this is a long time in the making, I feel like. Long time in the yeah. making. Well, you know, it's really neat, actually, how it started because... Um, you know, I, I actually met Matthew at the MMVAs uh, uh, really quickly. There was a red yeah. carpet there, and, and I met Matthew Santoro, who, by the way, if you go to Matthew Santoro on YouTube, you're going to see that there's uh, just under 5 million people who follow this guy. Uh, he's blowing up as well on Facebook, on Twitter, 300,000 plus. Uh, he's got another vlog channel, 600,000 people plus. And then Rob Dyke is, uh, is still still remarkable numbers, of like 2 million and 100,000 and all. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's actually pretty crazy. It's okay. It's awesome. It's okay. So I meet Matthew at the MMVAs. And, and, and I, you know, I, I, I don't know much about the YouTube world. And in a way, since I met you, I said, you know what? I got to get into this because there's a, there's a big success to be yep. had there. Yep. Uh, and then we had a nice little exchange. And I was like, hey, dude, I hope you, I can get you on the show. <laughs> and then and I actually never heard from you again. And I yeah. was, I, I was kind of hurt. Yeah, you know, of course. Like, of course. And I don't blame you, man. It was a weird time in my life. <laughs> Segway. No. Uh, you know, <laughs> no, it was a weird time in my life. And uh, I was just, I was not. Not myself, and so I do apologize for that. No, yeah. I, and you know what? Um, no apology needed. But I'm I'm uh, very grateful for it. I, as I'm I'm uh, I'm always a man of my word, and if I ever fuck up, I I'm I'm the first to forgive and, and or say sorry, and then I'm I'm the easiest guy to forgive. So cool. uh, uh, thank you for that. And, and it's okay. You're here now, so let's yeah, not man. dwell on that moment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and so as you know, we 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 uh, we meet, and then we had this. <laughs> You know, I don't know where to start this because I want to talk it's, about it. It's weird, listeners. right? There's a lot of uh, there's I history. A, I got an idea. Yeah, I got okay, a great right. idea. Why don't we just start with you and your story? I and like then, Rob, that. we'll get to you and your story as well. That's and then we're going to find out how you guys met. And then we're going to come back to kind of us sure. and our story. Sure. Well, I mean, it was Tinder. Uh, you know, I swiped right. So did he. And the it rest was of history. Grinder. Grinder. <laughs> sorry, grinder. Yeah, sorry, grinder. Sorry, sorry. Um, Not only is he the number one periscoper in the world, but he's the number one grinder user in the world. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. He has I, I've been a known lot to grind people on that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, I guess my story is uh, about f over five years ago. I started making YouTube videos, and uh, I, I started doing it as a hobby on Saturdays to basically keep myself sane because I was an accountant and you know there's not a lot of creativity in the accounting world and then uh, after getting my master of accountancy degree doing that for a couple of years I got laid off which ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me because I ended up taking YouTube more seriously and I decided well you know, I went into accounting because I thought if I get a master's, it would give me a safe job. And as it turns out, there really are no safe jobs anymore. And, and the world is moving more towards working for yourself. Uh, so that's what I decided to do. I thought, okay, I'm just going to take a chance, see what happens with YouTube. And after doing it consistently for a year on YouTube, it finally took off after a full year of doing it consistently. And, uh, and the rest is history, and I'm just kind of doing my thing now. So for that year, though, when you're putting up videos and stuff, did, did you have sort of an idea on how you wanted to structure the videos? And the second part to that question, did you have anyone watching them? Uh, well, when I started, I, I mean, I, I put a lot of effort into them, and I only had about 2,000 views a video, which was uh, difficult for me and a lot of people. That's why a lot of people give up on YouTube is because you put so much effort into these videos, and people aren't really watching. And uh, not that 2,000 views isn't a lot, but it's, you know, when you put so much effort, you hope for more, and you see other people doing well. Um, but, yeah, I, I never really thought of, uh, of, like, giving up per se, but, like, it, it did cross my mind a couple times, but I'm just glad that I kept with it. Matthew, just a little closer to the mic, if you don't mind. For oh, me. yeah, no problem. Oh, yeah, look at better. that. Yeah, oh, yeah. my sound way better. Matt. You that sound good. Sense. Sorry about that. You yeah. sound No, don't be sorry. I, I just thought. Uh, oh, nice. That's great. So yeah. so you're doing the videos for that year. A couple. How, how much time 
would you put into some of these videos? How much time would you put in? Are you are you periscoping live? No, I'm not. I'm vlogging at the moment. That's so cool. I'm try, I hope hey, that's vloggers. cool. Yeah, no, yeah. you can do it. You can do it. And if you want to periscope, you can do anything yeah, you want. Yeah, we, yeah. I mean, obviously, we're grateful. Don't worry. For the my attention too. is with you. My okay. Attention no, is we love you. it. We. I mean, I, I. But I get your. I mean, I'm. I'm starting to understand the world. The the effort and the mm -hmm. editing and all that kind of stuff and the writing of, of scripts and putting it into the video uh, videos that you were first mm -hmm. doing has that changed or is it still the same amount of time? Like it's a uh, because you do about a couple a week, right? Yeah. Uh, so I make two videos a week uh, and up until a little while ago I was doing it all myself uh, but recently I enlisted the help of some close friends who now help me do the research write for me and then uh, I also have a friend Brock who edits for me so I have a little small team but they're really good at what they do and uh, they've helped me not only double my output of videos but increase the quality of them as well Fantastic. So what's an example for, for people who, and you know, maybe there's a Todd Shapiro show listener who's not YouTube savvy. They yep. don't go on there. They don't have their YouTube sensations that they follow. Uh, give us some examples of some of the stuff that you would do. Uh, like that I have done on my YouTube yeah, channel? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I have four series. Uh, one is called Myths You Still Believe, which is all about uh, basically debunking myths, kind of like a Mythbusters type thing. Uh, I have a, a series called Facts in Five, where Rob is staring deeply into my eyes, and I'm not sure why he's trying to distract me. Uh, I have a series. Success. I have a series called Facts in Five, uh, which is all about learning about one topic in five minutes or less. I have a my traditional top ten lists, which everyone knows what top ten lists are, and then I have a series called Fifty Amazing Facts, where I present fifty really cool facts that I found on the internet that uh, you likely didn't know that are meant to kind of blow your mind type thing. Now, are, are you like, have you sort of been a pioneer in the YouTube world? Or is there a formula to, to some of the success <clears throat> on top of the talent, the hard work, the research, the delivery, all of that? Uh, I mean, a, a pioneer in what regard? You know, just the list, the 50 most things, you know, the 10 I, this. Yeah. Like, you know, like you started doing it five years ago, and now you see that everyone's kind of trying to emulate this stuff. And I'm wondering if you were one of sort of the first guys in YouTube or ladies to yeah. kind of, to kind of have this structure. Um, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the thing with top tens is it's nothing new. Like, uh, I believe Johnny Carson started it like over what 50 years ago. So it's, it's, it's a format that's been working for a long time and a lot of people have adopted it. And all that I did was just do it in my own way. And that's something that I, you know, I, I'm of the belief that there's nothing, there's no original ideas anymore. Anything that's ever been done has any idea that's ever could have been done has been done by now. So it's it's all about doing whatever your idea is in your way. And anytime somebody has an idea for a YouTube series, I never say, or I always say, never go on YouTube and search to see if it exists because it does. I guarantee you it does in some way, shape or form. There's a lot of videos there. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> don't, yeah, like don't go out there and try to, uh, you know, see if it exists because it does. So all that's going to do is distract you in, you know, uh, make you not want to do it. So do what you want want to do do it in your way and you know maybe you can make a career out of it matthew santoro joins us uh from from his youtube fame the, the, that year i always go back to that year when you're working it's like a startup company for you so because you dedicated so much time and worked so hard at editing these videos i have a feeling that you actually expected some <laughs> success to come with it that it wasn't just a fluke and am i am i safe to assume that yeah i mean in the early years i like i was one of those people that didn't fall into success. I worked towards it. Some people have a viral video and, you know, they have their 15 minutes and they go away. Uh, other people have a viral video and make a career out of it. Me, I didn't have any of those things. I worked towards it and I've been working towards it for a long time. And after four years of doing it with very little payoff, it finally paid off. So, um, it, you know, it takes time, but just like anything else in life, like, that's no different from, you know, <clears throat> anything else you want to make a career out of. It takes a lot of practice and eventually I believe that you'll get there with enough hard work and determination. Uh, and I, you know, I really respect that about you and, and I didn't know it. So I didn't know if I was going to respect that about <laughs> you, but I, you know, cause some guys do just fall into it. They get one video for some reason, it gets caught up in that vortex. Yeah. It gets you the 4 million hits and then you create a subscriber base and that you can actually monetize it and do okay without yeah. really doing any kind of work. And, that, and that's kind of, yeah. as an old school broadcaster, and, and I'm wondering if it comes from a resentment place or, or maybe it's just envy, but there, there, you know, it's probably jealousy. I, you know, I look at some of these guys, I go, wow, there's, there's like no talent there, but they yeah. have such a big following. And I go, maybe I should be happy for them, but I realize what I've done and how hard I work here on a platform like Sirius XM. And should I have just gone only the YouTube world? But then when I hear stories like you, like this has taken some time. 
Oh, it's taken a long time. Yeah. And I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people like that. But uh, there, you know, there's some of that within the YouTube world as well. Like, you know, myself and, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of that where we'll look at some people and be like, how the hell do they yeah. have that many subscribers? And, you know, there's various reasons for various things. Sometimes YouTube, you know, will promote uh, a certain individual because they represent a certain uh, either gender or race. And, you know, it, they're trying to create like an equality thing. And that's great. Um, but sometimes it's, it's, it's not always based on talent. It's based on other factors and you're just kind of like, you know, there's other people that could probably, you know, deserve. So it, you're not the only one there's, there's I, th that, that exists in all realms and including YouTube. Do you ever have, uh, you know, say TV stars or movie stars that you've interviewed and musicians? I saw you at the, uh, I Heart music fest, I believe, or something. Uh, or, or uh, global citizen, Festival. global citizen. I apologize. Yeah. One, and, and you're, you're talking to the legends of this planet, but have you ever had anyone come up to you and say, Oh no, I don't want to do an interview with a YouTuber. Has that ever happened? No, not Good. really. Um, it, I mean, I'm trying to think. It, not like really. People realize the importance and the direct reach. Of no, what not always. No? Yeah, okay. I see where you're going with that. Yeah, yeah. it's it's more of like uh, some people do, and I think people are trying to are they're starting to get it more and more. But for the, I don't want to say for the most part, it, that's starting to wane. Like the thought of oh, these are just kids making videos out of their apartment. I think that mentality is more or less dead now. Uh, it still exists to a degree, more more so among the older folks. But I think for the most part, people get it. It's a serious business. And we, you know, we make good money off of it and it is a business and it's, it's not, you know, just, uh, you know, us having fun. Although we do have a lot of fun doing what we do. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard calling it a job sometimes, but, uh, but yeah, it's, well, that's the beauty about any media, yeah. any platform, radio, uh, yeah. YouTube, if you're a sports broadcaster, I mean, if you can do what you love, have a passion doing it in this world and you get to meet the celebrities and get to have a following mm -hmm. and get to make some money from it. Yeah. I mean, we really, it's a privilege. It's it is. A pri absolutely. And, 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 and that's sort of my, you recognize the privilege and the audience that, that you, you reach out to. 100%. And you know, you hit the nail, nail right on the head. It's like, what what we get to do, and I say we because I mean the community as a whole, the YouTube community, is anyone who's who has the privilege of entertaining or having an audience, uh, a large group of people, I think that you have to take that seriously. And I think that's why it's so important to put, you know, a good message out there for people because it's like that is – you you influence a lot of people and that's why I'm really proud to say that my whole career I've only ever done positive things and tried to make people to educate people and have fun make people laugh and uh, I've you know I've never I've never I've never jumped on any bandwagons like I I never did the uh, the Harlem Shake like I never you know those yep, yep. viral trends yeah, the like quick thing you never got involved yeah, in I never them. got involved you didn't need in them didn't oh no it's not that I didn't need him I, it, well, you I didn't you didn't really need to type someone type in the the Harlem Shuffle and then your name comes up with exactly it. yeah you know yeah, you, I, and I mean it, looking back could it have benefited me maybe I know some people that I, that did it that got a quick like thirty thousand subscribers but I've never been about the the quick fame I've never been about like hey what's the fastest way to grow because I think that that's a really dangerous path to go down and I, I I'm really glad that I did it the way I perceive to be. Uh, something that's going to last for many years. Hey, what's up? I'm Roddy. Subscribe to our channel. You're going to love it. For the rest of this episode, you got to check out our podcast yeah. online on the website. Go check it out. You won't be disappointed.